Welcome back for part three of the DeSoto Shell Adventure. Uh, first time, the first video, we went to the south end of the beach by the pier, found some little traps, all kinds of cool littles. Video number two, we went nothing but shelling up toward the north end. And in this video, we're going to complete the rest of the shelling from the north end. And we'll go through our shell identification and I'll show you some of the really cool stuff that I got to make. So thank you so much for coming back. I'm glad you're enjoying the series and welcome back to the channel. from where I came on the beach. So before I leave, I want to try a little experiment. I brought this clear box with me and it's meant to like store coffee. It's nothing that's ocean related or shelling related or anything. It's just something I grabbed because I thought it might be neat to put the camera in it. Since I'm, I know, I know it's a Hero 11. I'm supposed to be able to get it wet, no problem, but I can't bring myself to get this camera wet yet. So I'm going to try going in the water. I'm going to drop my stuff here. And I'm going to go out there and just put the camera in that clear box and see what there is to see. Okay, so I had to stop for a second and get the sea urchins out of the bag into the box. And I also found out there's a couple of big holes on the bottom of my bag. So I... Uh, been putting the little guys in my pocket so they didn't fall through and I just want to keep them in here so they don't get lost either and this is my clear box I'm gonna take this into the water with the camera see what we see okay it's experiment time I'm gonna put my camera in here and I'm gonna put it in the water and see what we see down there on the bottom I've never tried this before so uh, and it's, it's just like a little, you know, like a food storage container. You can put coffee or pasta or whatever in it. But, um, I don't know. It got a little scuffed up from my bag, too. I can see some little scratch marks in it. That's unfortunate. But the part I want to work is on the bottom anyway. So, uh, yeah, let's see how this goes. Okay. Take two. I heard the beep 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 of a dead battery right as I was getting through the water edge. So try this again. Okay. Put the camera in the bottom. And maybe I should turn it this way. Might keep it wedged in there better. Okay, let's try that.
was harder than you would think. It wants to float and I don't have a handle on it. So it's, it's hard to carry. But gosh, everybody's finding sand dollars out here and I really wanna go all the way and find some. Maybe I'll put the box back up there on the beach. I'm only about 20 feet away from the shoreline. I'm not far. All right, the box is a neat idea, but with the tide coming back in and the waves, it makes it tough to hold on to the walker and to the box. I don't have a handle on it. And the box wants to float, so it's hard to hold it down so I can see what's in the water. Well, might have to think this one through again. But I really won't know what it looked like until I get done today either because it's too sunny and bright out here to see what's actually happening to replay the footage. So I like this idea. I think it'll work. We'll see. We'll see tonight when I get this offloaded what things look like. Yeah, I like this so much I ended up actually ordering a real one. Lots of nifty stuff in the water. All kinds of broken bits of everything. And now that the tide's coming back in, where I'm standing was all open earlier. As a matter of fact, where you see those waves breaking further off and those two people up there, that's where that big exposed sandbar was. And I see something in the water over there. I don't know if somebody's snorkeling or what that is. I think so. Lots of people in the water now looking for sand dollars. So yeah, I'm gonna try going to a less crowded spot and then uh, maybe make my way back home. Been out since pretty early. The sun's high in the sky above me. It's gotta be about lunchtime. So uh, let's keep going. And now you know why I ruined four walkers a year. This is the depth I actually like to be above my knees, but not quite to my hips, not over the top of the walker. This is a great depth for me for water walking, even if I'm not finding anything. I see lots of stuff in the water, but it's lots of pieces of big things, big surf clams, big cockles, smashed up biting conks. Not a lot of stuff that I really wanna take home. I wish I had the guts to get my camera wet. I don't know why I'm not. I'm, I know, I know in my brain I'm supposed to. I just can't bring myself to do it yet. <laughs> What's this? Ooh, look at that. That'll make a really cool pen. What gorgeous colors. Very nice. And I think I see an olive over here. Well, it's a broken one, but that actually is the right part of the shell for making a pendant. So I'm going to keep that too. I guess I want more in this smashed up stuff than I thought. Ow. Hello, apple. 
purple murex. Aren't you beautiful? That's oh, a super shell. Really nice. Another piece of pen shell. Although, ugh, that one's not in great shape though. All sorts of stuff out here. Some more of the pen shell maker, that's pretty. What other little beauties do we have out here? Ooh, some more of that pretty stuff. Stuff and then that waves are slap and it clouds up and I can't tell if my eyes were tricking me or if I saw what I saw. Just had a sunray Venus clam. Oh, is that it? There it is. Oh, he's got a couple of things on him, but yeah, it's all coming right off, no problem. All right, that's a nice one. Oh, look, got a little olive and a little hinged coquina. Nice. Drop a little fistful of stuff in the bag. Now, when I started out this morning, I really didn't walk this section of beach because I was up there cutting off the corner to go northwards. So, we're gonna stop at this point, head toward the parking lot, and then relocate down to the south end. Dead fish. There's one. There's one. There's one. Not really enough of them there for me to tell what they are. Um, a bunch of broken stuff up here in this kind of high line. Eh. I could dig through it. I see a Sunray Venus clam over there even. I've found a few of those today though, so. I'm more interested in going to the other section of the island, so we're going to call it here. <laughs> oh, got a little snowy egret out there. Kind of checking things out. I was walking this way a second ago when I turned the camera on, too. You gonna come over and say hello, buddy?
All right. I've sorted out our finds from North DeSoto Beach. And uh, let's take a look at what we have. You see a very huge pile here in the middle. We'll talk about this in just a second. Okay. We got some of that cool pen shell nacre that I've been collecting. I haven't shown you yet what it is that I'm making with that, but it's a, a bigger project. It's probably going to take me a while longer. So when I have that all together, I will show you what I've been saving all this crazy pen shell nacre for. We also have a little juvenile Florida fighting conch, really nice orange color. A few apple murexes, a couple of prickly cockles, giant Atlantic cockles, some hinge crossbar venus, just a handful of scallops, not very many that day. So we got some little hinge coquinas, saracen augers. Oh, we got some spiny jewel boxes up here. Look at the spike on that guy. Wow, he's really nice. A few of them had some great spikes, actually. We got here the channel duck clam, aka sailor's ear. A nice hinge docinia. And I believe uh, I'm going to have to look in the book to see if this is a regular or an elegant docinia. That's a surf clam. Lots of sunray venus clams. And, and look at these. These are drill holes where other critters have tried to bore into this shell or, in some cases, been successful. So that's the sunray venus clam. There was some really pretty uh, pink and mauve coloring in the, the clams up there. Most of the time we find them were like this, brownish. But look at how look at how pink that is. And look at how goofy his lines are. I really liked that one. In the bits and pieces department, we have a couple of whelks, pieces of whelks, pieces of tulips, pieces of a fighting conch. This huge, I don't know if this is an apple murex or a pitted murex because it's in really rough shape. It could, for all I know, actually be a fossil. It's definitely been at the beach a while, so he's going to go for a bleach bath and get cleaned up, and we'll see what we're dealing with here. Got some olives, a little tiny moon snail, a jingle, that's a little uh, lady-in-waiting Venus, buttercup lucines. That jingle was cool. I don't really find them in that iridescent gray color very often. And you can see the little foot imprint, the little baby foot imprint that's on the insides of these. And this olive, man, look at the coloring on that. That is stunning. Love that. It's like, super glossed. Like, touching glass. It's so nice. Alright. These guys. Alright, well, before we, we tackle them, let's talk about Ducinias for a second. And we have disc docinia and elegant docinia. The disc ones are smoother. The elegants have a, a ridge line that you can feel. So in this case, this one's very smooth. So this would in fact, although the color looks closer to elegant, it is in fact disc docinia. Now, at first I thought these little guys were docinias or lucines as well. Um, color wise, it sort of looks like a disc docinia. But it's very, very thin and doesn't seem to match up. So then I look down my book and I look at this guy. Thin Cyclonella. And they only get about an inch or so across, which is exactly what these guys are. They're way too thin to be docinias. And uh, they don't match up with these growth rings for lucines at all. No cross hatching, no anything like that. So these are actually thin Cyclonellas all hinged and I've seen this happen actually one other time where these guys will wash in on mass uh, after it's usually after a big cold snap and they'll be packed packed full of sand way up in the high rack line dried out stuck together like this slit open and they're definitely expired so I have a special project for these in mind where I'm going to be using these as flower petals. And once I'm a little further along, I will show you the progress on how that's going too. This is like the only time of year that I find these guys like this too. Most of the time, not even present at the beach. Maybe you might find half of one 
But uh, to find them hinged like this in this numbers, I mean, there were literally thousands of them on the beach that day. So this is kind of fun. This gives me a, a nice solid bunch of them to work with to do a bigger art project with. I'm super excited about it. So I picked a few things out to work with from this pile from DeSoto South. Um, I love that little guy. He's going to be a pendant. Gorgeous. And the colors on these olives are really nice. And these three are fairly close to each other. So these look like they'll make a good necklace earring set. And I kind of just love that those two guys are about the same size. That's hard to do to find olives that are the same size. That's tough. I'm going to take some of these augers and serifs and I'm going to be cutting them in half because I thought that little ice cream cone I made a while back was so cute. I want to make some more. Love the color of this olive. Absolutely stunning. So he's going to be getting made into a necklace by himself. And then these little uh, bits and pieces here. All right, so we have the Venus clams. And one, I had more pairs of these little crossbar guys, but I'm just gonna work just with this one. This is an outside edge of a tulip. It's gonna make a really cool pendant piece. These little sunray Venus clams are also gonna make cute pendants. Now, this one already has a hole drilled in it. I love that, it saves me the work. But we're gonna see how it goes with these guys. I kinda like these two. Um, I wish they were a hinged pair, but obviously they're both the, the same side of a clam. They obviously won't go together. Uh, but I, I really just like the patterns on these guys, really nice. This is a little rough scallop that's in a really dark color. You don't usually find them this dark. They're usually like a brick red. So I thought that might be fun to maybe match up with this or with this. This is an outside edge piece of a very big moon snail who was probably about so big, roughly. And I just thought the color of that was incredible inside and outside. I'm not sure exactly yet if it's gonna be a pendant or earrings, but I just really like that creaminess on the outside and that dark on the inside, really cool. And then of course, a couple of broken weld pieces, and I'll be turning those guys into some earrings as well. And last, but not least certainly, are all these thin cyclonella pairs. So what's gonna happen is these guys are gonna get cleaned up bleached. There's a bit of periostricum this uh, brownish stuff on the outside of these does in fact flake off and it'll come off easy with a sanding disc in most cases. So, yep. Those little fellas are going to be made into some earrings that might just get decoupage. I'm not entirely sure yet. Ooh, so fun! See that I've been marking out some of this stuff for where to put holes and where to cut things apart. This is that crazy piece of that moon snail with that dark color inside and those nice creamy bands in it. I'm gonna go ahead and make like a teardrop out of this guy. And uh, these are gonna be a pair of earrings, a pair of earrings and a pennant together from the same shell, which would be kind of cool. I uh, had to mark some dots on my olives with a sharpie because they're so glossy the pencil won't actually stick to it. 
And I do some guidelines on these little guys to cut them open to make cones. The pencil does not want to stick to these little crossbar venus. I'm going to take a wire wheel and get that calcification out of there anyway. And then we'll see what happens with these venus clams. Now two of them already had holes in them. And then these three I have marked. In the past, I have tried to cut and drill these. And I found that going from this side, the, the side with the pattern, I got a lot of chips and a, a big mess. It like destroyed the shells. I really wasn't able to do anything with them. So this time I'm gonna try just drilling them, not cutting them. And we'll do it under the water and see on one of them if it works out. My last resort will be to back it with painter's tape and try that. And then over here, I pulled out some of the bigger pairs of those cyclonella shells, those paired up white shells. And you can see the periostracum is kind of flaking off of them here. So much like what I did with the freshwater mussels, I'm going to just take a sanding drum to these and get those cleaned up and make some earring pairs with some designs in the insides. Should be kind of cool. a wire wheel and then the sanding jump to the inside of those little crossbar venus and look at all that pretty tan and purple we found in there underneath that white stuff beautiful so now decide which way i want to hang them if they want to be this way with the point down yeah i think so there we go and those guys can get drilled And since I have the sanding drum on the Dremel already, let's, uh, let's take a crack at one of these pairs of cyclonellas. Nope, that was my dryer beeping in the background, sorry. Okay, open this little guy up. I'm going to want to sand off this hinge area and that periostracum junk all over the outside, and then we'll see what we have. All right, as you can see, as we get toward the edge of the shell, it gets very thin, and the, even the less aggressive sanding disc did take a little bit off of that. But that's okay, because once I clean that side up, I'm going to put the two of them kind of back together and make sure that we don't have one ridge sticking out farther than the other and that they're lopsided or anything weird. But yeah, that stuff does end up coming off in kind of weird little papery chunks. Kind of different than some of the other shells I've done this with. Still pretty cool. There we have a cleaned up pair. Show you what that looks like compared to one that has not been done yet. And you can see the difference, that light tan coating over the top of it that's not here on these anymore. And I did hold the two together to get the edges nice and evened off too, so that it wouldn't be one bigger than the other or anything like that in the earring pair. So I'm going to go ahead and clean the rest of these little guys up too. Uh, getting the periostracum wet on these makes it harder to get it off, not easier. Which was the exact opposite of the way things were when we did the mussels the last time. So the ones that I put in to soak it, I'm pulling those out of the water because this is a big, big, messy pain in the neck doing this wet. just for giggles since I had a wire brush handy I took a try at them with a wire brush next now I'm not sure if you can see this on the camera there's a little ridge right there in these shells a little bit reminiscent of a Pennsylvania Lucene but that's not a Pennsylvania Lucene for sure way too thin so that little ridge right there and all these little ridge lines are making it hard to get this stuff off with a sanding drum but it came off beautifully with the wire wheel. So I think the trick here is going to be leaving them hooked together. 
running them over the wire wheel, then sanding in the edges, then splitting them. is why you wear a mask. Patrick and mop these little pairs of the cyclonellas. I've got my pieces of whelk and tool with the moon snail cut and these augers as well. And now it's time to drill some holes. Let's hope that we don't uh, shatter the Sunray Venus clams and that they come out okay. Cross my fingers.
Venus clams do not want to be drilled near their ends. That's a shame too. That one was really kind of pretty. So, okay. It kind of makes me wonder why critters that go after them drill them through here. Since it seems like they could break into the whole shell going off of this side, but I don't know. So, the only safe place it looks like to be able to drill these guys is up here near that little point so that they can hang this way. And that will hang at a, a little slight little bit of an angle, which will still look cool. I guess I can try this like one more time, putting some painter's tape or something like that on it to keep it from snapping, but it's something about the vibration. Once you get into a certain depth, the vibration, the shell just hates it and just blows out. So, oh well, so much for that, but everything else worked out pretty good. And the last little bit of what needs to be done are our little cyclonella pairs and they need their, uh, their holes. bench here and you'll see I have these thin cyclonellas laid out the ones that were the paired that I found and drilled clean the edges up a little on them and I'm gonna now decoupage them and make earring pairs out of them and then this is a little Venus clam this one's in progress it's had the uh, decoupage applied to it and then it's gonna get a little shell here it had a hole naturally in it when I found it and it's gonna get hung like that with a little little shell or a little pearl or something there with the ocean background which I thought was kind of cute so some of these are gonna get different coral designs or pieces of shell or starfish and I've got a couple up here that are already done some little flamingos well they're not done but they're done that step and then this pair here which I was just about to start on this little pair uh, yeah, that was backwards. Okay. <clears throat> this little pair looks like that. And I want to try to, um, you know, get the, the pattern matched up both sides as closely as I can. With, you know, the understanding that these are slightly different on the inside and they will make a little little bit of a difference where I cut things. But as I can tell right now, I already have way too much up here and down here. So I'll start out with shortening that up quite a bit. Like 
that off and some of the bottom as well. Alright, that'll be a little easier to work with. Let's throw that away. Now, where I'm going to place this is on the inside. Now, around the edges of these shells, you can see that's a, some of their hinge. And I did, when I drilled them, I did scuff a bunch of that stuff off. But some of it still remains on there. That doesn't matter because these edges are going to get painted after the fact anyway. So that won't actually show at all. So what I did was just, you know, I had sanded it fairly smooth. And then once it goes over with the sealant and then the paint, it'll be just fine. You won't even see that. Now before I start, I sort of wanted to see how these... Uh, how these little guys are gonna hang. I'm gonna try them together. And I can already tell I'm a little bit off on my whole drill, but that's okay. So we wanna see what the high point is going to be and then try to make the ocean, the sea's horizon line as, as close to perpendicular to that as we can, so the ocean looks straight with the sky. I have some Mod Podge, and I like this liquid stuff because I can spray it or I can paint with it, and it's not really thick and goopy like the, uh, the normal stuff this stuff is. This stuff's okay for, like, bigger projects, but when you're working on something delicate, you really don't want that thick, goopy kind of, you want this thinner stuff. It works a lot better. Got a lighter. And I have some water here in a cup and just a couple of brushes. Set those out and get those ready. And then I have another one down here that's dry. And I'll show you that in a minute why I, I keep this one dry. Some good sharp pointy scissors and uh, this that I'm decoupaging with are napkins. And you get these decorated napkins all over the place. You, they're usually two or three ply and you want to separate that top layer with the design on it from the rest of it. And that'll look, the rest of it'll look kind of like that with a hint of the printing on it and just white. But that's what the uh, that's what the napkins look like when you take them apart. All right then, let's get started. I just unscrew the cap so that I can dip the paintbrush into it. I'm gonna coat all of this with a nice layer. And make sure I got the little hole at the top. And that's roughly where I want it. So just make sure I'm lined up and then touch it. I work from the center outward. After a minute, your finger gets wet, so just dry it off. And then if you notice that this is starting to, the napkin's sucking it up so it doesn't want to stick to the shell, now's about the time when you add a little bit more. lay it into the shell, just like that. Yeah. 
Now you don't want to brush hard on it or you'll tear the, the napkin. There we go, we got that on there. Rinse my brush off. Just set that on there for a second. Now, carefully, I need to pick this up. And you don't want to put too much of the decoupage stuff on there because it gets the napkin wet. And what we want to do is trim this excess off gently. You don't want to pull on that napkin. And then to get the rest of it off right up to the edge of the shell, we're going to take a lighter to it. Dampen that again and make sure that's stuck. See, that part got a little damp, so it took a little more to get it off of there. There we go. Take the dry brush, just look away the little ashes. See it just falls off. And you got two little spots over here didn't get quite up to the edge of the shell. There we go. There we go. <sighs> Oop. Got that out of there. Alright, so now we're going to just let this dry. Oh, one more step. That's where the hole is. You can see that from this angle. I'm gonna take a pin and just gently go right through there. Just wanna do it carefully so you don't pull the napkin out, but. All right, now we're gonna set this up to dry. And we're gonna repeat the process.
again, don't worry about that because that's going to have paint over it. Here we go. Cool. I kind of like these. go and I'm gonna do that for these sure if it was clear in the earlier parts of the video what I was doing when I get to this stage but there's a drop of water on the end of this pin and I'm putting it right where that hole is and then opening it up I'm doing that so that it doesn't pull the, the tissue back out of the shell <sighs> then I just blow the rest of that stuff through, you know, we have our hole back. Now you're going to see the edges of these have a little bit of burnt look to them and whatnot and some of them. Don't worry about that, like here, because these are all going to have an edging on them. So none of that is, uh, that's not going to actually show when I'm completely done. So now we're going to close this up and we're going to give these overnight to dry and we'll work on some other things in the meantime. Well, we are at the stage now where most everything is dry and it's got two coats of the Mod Podge on it. So pretty good in the, the Mod Podge department now. So the next step is to clean up their edges a little bit. Just gonna take a little sanding emery board here and just go around the edges and I'll show you why. Take a look at this one that has not been sanded. 
you can see that dark edge there around there and then this one that has and it just looks nice and clean and ready for the paint step that'll come next after this so all I'm doing is just taking this little file and just going like that the edge of the shell and the very last little bit of stuff that was stuck from the decoupage process and the edge burn off will all just come off of here see that Sorry if the camera is shaking. I realized I was holding my arms in, probably making the camera shake a bit. Apologies. All right. And there we have it. A little bit of stuff came off the edges. And look how nice now. Nice clean edges. Nice little pair of blue tulips right there. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for everything else. I'm not sure if this is going to show, but I'm going to try anyway. These little cyclonellas are kind of see-through. See that? Where you can kind of see the light passing through there? I thought that was really cool. So all of these you know, have that kind of stained glassy sort of effect when you're out in the sun. Oh, that is so cool. That's so neat. Next thing that's going to need doing is putting some color around the edges whether it's a gold silver or like an aqua blue i'm not exactly sure exactly yet what's going on there but i did an experiment on this one and the paint ran out of the pen a bit fast on me so i'm not sure that i like the uh the paint pen and because it made a mess all over the back of the shell i'm just gonna have to paint that shell <laughs> silver now <laughs> Uh, okay, well, you know, hey, try things out. They work, they work, they don't, they don't. This is a chalk marker. I think I'm going to give this a, a shot. Let's see if it works. Hmm. I kind of like that, actually. It's a little tough to cover over that hinge part because of the texture. But other than that... Ooh, I think I kind of like that. Alright. Set those aside to dry. And now I'm going to go and find my paint and see how that works. I've pulled a metallic gold and a metallic silver 
and a navy blue, which is pretty dark, actually, now that I'm looking at it. And, uh, well, I guess this paint is a little bit older. It's a little bit thick. That's okay. I kind of actually want it thick. And what I want is a brush with a nice chiselly edge on it. Nice and flat and straight. And try to dunk this in here without getting paint like everywhere. There we go. And I think these might look nice with the navy edge. Let's try it out. It does look pretty. Ooh. A little too much paint there. The key is to try to have a little, like a little roll of paint almost on the underside of the brush. And then just touch the edge. Oh, that looks pretty. I think I like that. There we go. Turn right side up here. Hmm. I might need to let that one dry for a second. There we go. Ooh. That's cute. I like those. Ooh, nice. All right, I'm going to try the gold next. Try taking the paint out of the cap. That seems like it might be a little bit easier. Let's see here. What would look good with the gold? How about... These little... Wispy looking seaweed guys. Okay. Ooh, that does look cute with the gold. I like that. Nice. This is sort of tricky trying to hold my hand out of the way of the camera so that you can see what it is I'm doing here. Gosh, what is going on outside? It sounds like all hell's breaking loose out there. Oh my gosh. Getting crazy wingus right now. Um, I kind of hope I don't lose power. Good grief. All right, I better see what's going on out there. All right, it sounds crazy loud outside. So, let's go see what's going on. Whoa. Yeesh. is pushing the door closed. The trees are going crazy and
up my appetite Don't leave me here high and dry was wet and it was painted but now things are dry we're about to give them a color, clear coat here and the only pair that I'm really didn't love how it came out see how the paint bled a little bit on that that's because my paintbrush was too wet at the time I don't know if you were able to notice in the video but once I noticed it was happening I started kind of drying the, the brush a lot better and using the paint on a drier brush so that I could paint around the edges. But these came out really fun. I love those little coral ones with the blue. Those are gorgeous. So, I'm gonna give them a few clear coats and hope that it dries. Uh, we've got a pretty good wind today, but it's about 80 and really humid here too. So, I, I don't know. I don't know if this stuff's gonna dry or if I'm gonna be waiting to put on a second coat for hours. I don't know. We'll find out. Try not to spray too close to them and get a big bunch of goo on it. But I also wanted to keep the spray mostly in the box and not blowing around too. So give it about 15 minutes and we'll see where we are. And I don't know if, if you can hear that wind in the background, but it's crazy right now out here. Thank you. 
Thank you.